Well, good morning, friends. My name is Josh Schuster, and I am the new lead pastor here at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. And I just wanted to take a moment to welcome you to worship with us this morning. If you're new here, that is completely okay. I am too, and so it's good to have you here with us. I just wanted to uh, let you know a little bit about what we're going to be doing and what you'll be experiencing this morning. You'll hear a little bit of music, you'll hear some scripture, you'll hear a message from me towards uh, the end of our service, but you'll also see towards the beginning a very neat uh, tradition here at St. Andrews with the passing of the stole is what it's called. And so Pastor Richard, as he finished his time two weeks ago, left the stole behind. The stole will be placed on uh, me by our lay leader uh, at the beginning of the service, kind of as a significance uh, and signifying the beginning of our time and my time here. And so uh, I'm really excited to be able to share this service with you. And so we'll look forward to being able to have you join us for our online worship this week. Let's get ready to worship together. Good morning. I'd like to welcome Pastor Josh Schuster and his family, his wife Beth, his son Jackson, and his daughter Raylan to St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. We're so glad to have you all here with us, and we look forward to you being part of our church community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Pastor Schuster, I place the St. Andrew's stole as you begin your service to St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. Well, friends, one of the things that I've done at my three other appointments is to help people understand transition a little bit in the Methodist Church. What St. Andrews does here with the stole and what Stephanie just uh, did was great. But one of the things that is really hard is for a church to understand, well, what is the new pastor's role in all of this? So one of the things that I started doing at my very first appointment when I was in Pennsylvania was I would take a book, uh, and it's a book of actually one of my favorite individuals to read, and it's about Sherlock Holmes. And it's a number of his collections. I love Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes is filled with a bunch of mystery and intrigue and all of these things, and we watch how Sherlock Holmes figures these things out. Well, Sherlock Holmes' story is much like, well, our journeys in life, isn't it? Filled with highs and lows, mystery, intrigue, trying to just, well, figure things out along the way. But I utilize a book because, well, this book actually signifies the life of St. Andrews. And as I open it here, and I open it up to chapter 14, now, I don't know if this is exactly chapter 14 of St. Andrews. What I do know is that this is the beginning of my chapter here at your church. And so I'm grateful to be able to be here. We, Beth and I have looked forward to being able to be appointed here and to serve here. And so we are very excited to be a part of your congregation and to be able to move our family back down to South Jersey. Part of the reason I use this book is as a reminder that we are a chapter in your story as a church. Now, how long that chapter will be, I don't know. But we're in this journey together, you as St. Andrews and me as your pastor and my family, Beth, Jackson, and Raylan. And we're excited. And the good news is, is that I know that if we keep God before us, it will indeed be a good chapter. So friends, let's begin to write this great chapter together. Amen. Friends, this time we will invite you to join us for our call to worship. What that means is that I will read the parts that are not in bold and we'll invite you to join us in the parts that are in bold. So the words will be on the screen and we will invite you to be able to read the words that are right there on the screen. When winds tear into our vessels, God's grace will be our guide. When insecurities mount up within our souls, God's strength will be our guide. When hardships weaken our resolve, God's mercy will be our guide. When insults rip and slander stains, God's courage will be our guide. When vulnerability saps our faith, God's presence will be our guide. Well, good morning, kids. It's so nice to be able to be able to introduce myself. My name is Pastor Josh. I am the new pastor here at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. And so some of you may get to know me as uh, Jack and Raylan's dad because I have two kids. Uh, Jack, who is four, and Raylan, who is one and a half. And I'm married, and my wife's name is Beth, and you can call her Miss Beth. But I figured what we would do for our first children's chat is I'd give you a chance to be able to get to know me a little bit. And what I'd love to be able to do is to be able to get to know you as well. And so when you are coming to church over the next uh, couple of months or in September, what I'd love to be able to have you do is what I'm going to do today is bring something from home so that way I can get to know your name and also something you really like. Uh, 
uh, because I'd love to be able to get to know you and your family. So I brought two things with me today. Uh, and so the two things I have are things that I normally keep in my office. Uh, Pastor Josh's office is a fun place to be able to be because I have lots of stuff in there. I have lots of Star Wars stuff and I have pictures that uh, kids from previous churches have uh, drawn me from uh, Newtown and Westmont and Milltown. I have all of these pictures in my office and so I have lots of fun stuff in there but a lot of what's in my office is sports stuff because Pastor Josh loves sports. And so my last church that I was at knew that Pastor Josh really loved sports and so what they did was they gave me a special sign uh, as part of my farewell. And so uh, it's the Philadelphia love sign. And so it has the Eagles and the Flyers and uh, the Sixers and the Phillies. And so every night before bed, what I do with Jackson is Jackson and I listen to uh, the Sixers song and we sing the Eagles song together. And so maybe you know those two songs. You probably know the Eagles song because most people here know the Eagles song, so that's a good thing. And so maybe you can sing that with your parents, but uh, that's one thing that I brought. And the other thing that Pastor Josh really likes is soccer. And I love Liverpool. And Liverpool plays over in England. And so what I brought with me is I brought with me my Liverpool scarf that I normally hang up in my office. And so what I'm gonna do is, when you come to church, please remember to, to bring uh, something with you so that way I can, again, get to know you a little bit since I showed you some stuff that I like and I gave you my name. I'd love to be able to get to know you and some uh, things that you enjoy. and. If you ever want, you are more than welcome to see my office and all the fun things that I have up there. Uh, it's a, a lot of fun up in Pastor Josh's office. So I appreciate you stopping by for the children's chat today. And Pastor Richard left uh, Jesus here, and so I'll be able to use Jesus uh, moving forward. And we'll have this time together each week. And so I'll look forward to that time, especially with uh, you uh, and maybe even your parents and siblings. So uh, looking forward to a good summer together. Friends, now we come to the prayer time of our service. And during this prayer time, we actually will invite you to pray well with us during this prayer time. And so you'll see the words on the screen and we will invite you to pray them with us as they are in bold. Lord, there is much in our past of which we are proud and in which we find hope for the future. Yet there is also much in our past that pains us, shames us, and that we know requires us to attempt to make right. Give us the strength and courage to personally as a nation to do the work that is before us to make our nation a beacon of hope, a land of true liberty and justice, and a place of welcome and succor to all who seek peace. Amen. At this time, we'll invite you to bow your heads and hearts and to pray the Lord's Prayer. If you don't know the words, that's okay. Uh, they will be up on the screen for you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, our gospel lesson this morning, it comes from the gospel of Matthew 26, verses 26 through 30. And this is what our scripture says. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for this is my body. And he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Eat, uh, each of you drink from it, 
For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the, for the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. They sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, this is what we're here for, isn't it? It's the first sermon. Back in February, when the appointment was announced, well, people were wondering, I wonder what he's going to be like. I wonder what his style is going to be like. And well, here we are. Well, this summer, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be traveling through a series called Summer of Streaming. So what that really means is we're going to be talking about a lot of movies and TV shows. Because, well, I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, I probably watched more TV than I ever should have. So a friend and colleague of mine back up north where I was just appointed, Matt Murphy, him and I created this sermon series together looking at some uh, newer movies and TV shows, some ones that brought back some nostalgia and some classics, really trying to incorporate all different ages and genres. And so we're really excited to be able to present this series to you. But today we're gonna talk about The Mandalorian. But before we begin that, I want to start by asking you a question. Who has poured in to you? I mean, in life, we don't get where we are in life without people pouring into us. Having just recently been ordained, there's something that seems to happen. You begin to do a lot of self-reflection. You begin to think about people that have poured into you. And so one of the pictures that I took on the day of my ordination was of three individuals. It was myself in the center. And on one of my sides, there was an individual that people from St. Andrews may even recognize, Rich Hendrickson, who is Pastor Gina, who was the pastor here for a number of years, her husband. And he was one of my mentors. And he was my primary mentor in this ordination process. And he spent many, many hours, lots of conversations, lots of meetings, reading over my paperwork, having many talks and encouraging me along the way. He spent so much time pouring into me, and I was so grateful for Rich. The other individual in this picture is an individual who has poured into me for a lot longer than I've known Rich, and that's my dad. I've known my dad for 34 years. That's how old I am. And my dad, my entire life, has been someone who has been willing to listen to me. Someone that has been willing to offer advice. Someone who has been, well, willing to do anything that has been needed to be done. But when I entered ministry, 
My dad never pushed me towards that because we have an understanding that when you enter the ministry, it's a call. It's something that God lays on your heart, something that you have to answer. My dad encouraged me every single step of the way. He was right there walking alongside me, and even now we have many conversations. In fact, we can't really see each other without talking about ministry. My dad continues to pour into me. Well, the passage that I read for us is about Jesus pouring into the disciples one last time. But before we get into the text, the passage, I want to talk to you about the Mandalorian. There's a scene in the Mandalorian, a clip in the Mandalorian, in the second season, where the child, our little friend here, who also goes by Baby Yoda, is having a hard time focusing during training because the right person isn't training Baby Yoda or the child. And the child only focuses in on one voice, and that is the Mandalorian. So the Mandalorian is part of the Star Wars series. And I was very excited because I love Star Wars when I found out that the Mandalorian was coming out. So what this child is able to do is focus in on the Mandalorian, block everything else out, and be able to listen and do what the Mandalorian asks. Well, see, the Mandalorian has two seasons in it. And this being able to focus on what the Mandalorian asks and is calling for the child to do doesn't just happen overnight. It takes an entire season and then four more episodes into the second season of a building of a relationship. The Mandalorian has to pour into the child in order for the child to fully understand, well, what relationship really looks like. Because relationship is built off of sacrifice, grace, things that we celebrate in communion, things that Jesus was trying to highlight with the disciples in our text, in our gospel lesson. And that's where we're going to turn to now is our gospel lesson from Matthew 26, verses 26 through 30. What Jesus did that night, a night that we still reflect on even in 2021. We just happened to call it Monday Thursday. But it was well, a time that the disciples were very familiar with. In fact, it was Passover. It was a time that they were accustomed to being able to get together. But what Jesus does is Jesus gathers them, gathers them around the table, and takes ordinary things, things that they were used to, unleavened bread, wine, and makes them extraordinary. See, friends, one of my favorite phrases is that God takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. See, that's what our God does. God takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary, and that's what Jesus did that night, because Jesus wanted to make sure that the disciples remembered what was taking place that night. He wanted them to pause, reflect, understand that something indeed was different that night. Something different about that meal. See, Jesus had spent plenty of time almost daily pouring into the disciples over three years with them. Jesus never passed up an opportunity to be able to pour into the disciples. Jesus knew about relationship. Jesus knew what it took. Jesus was trying to help the disciples understand it's about service. It's about sacrifice. It's about grace. It's about what we celebrate, what we remember, what we reflect on monthly here in the Methodist Church when we partake in communion, which we'll do shortly. Jesus wanted to make sure that they understood that they have a place at the table, the table where Jesus was. 
the good news for us is that still very much in 21 that message is still true Jesus's message the message of communion is still very much still there it's still about sacrifice it's still about grace it's still about the fact that there is a seat at the table for us relationship is so important See, relationship can be life-changing, and that's what Christ was. That's what Christ was trying to communicate to the disciples, and ultimately that's what happens in The Mandalorian. But as I get ready to wrap up, normally what I do is I wrap up with a story. But because it's my first Sunday, why not do something different? And I'm going to wrap up with a question. What do you know well? What do you know really, really well? Is it cars? Maybe cooking? Antiques? Music? Politics? Or maybe, like myself, sports? I just spent time talking with children about how much I love sports. I mean, I know sports, rules, regulations, statistics, eras. You name it, I know it. I love sports. And it's great to be able to know these things. Sports, movies, music, cars, politics, whatever it is, it's great that we know these things. But the real question is, how well do you know God? So friends, while you may know those things, those things aren't life-changing. And those things don't change the lives around you. Only one thing does, and that's God. God's grace and God's love not only changes our lives, but the lives of those around us. As friends, God is pouring into us each and every single day. But the question is, are we listening? We have to be able to block out the chaos of this world. Become like the child in the Mandalorian shuts our everything else out and focus in on one voice, that life-changing voice. And if you listen to it, it's still saying you are loved. There is grace that is found. You are forgiven. And there's a seat at the table for you. Amen. Well, friends, we come to the time where we celebrate and remember and reflect on Holy Communion. Holy Communion is something that is very special. And I read a text today, and our whole scripture today, in the service today, was built around Holy Communion. That night, Jesus got together with his disciples. They gathered in a room. Uh, they gathered for a meal. A regular celebration that they were used to, as I talked about, Jesus took the ordinary and made it extraordinary. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke that bread, and said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And when the supper was over, Jesus took a cup, gave thanks, passed it around, and said, take, drink, this is my blood shed for you, the cup of salvation. I often say when I do communion that maybe the disciples didn't know exactly that night what was taking place, but soon they would come to understand. And as a reminder, as I talked about in my sermon, well, there is a place at the table that is reserved just for us, just as that night for the disciples. So this time, I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me as I bless our elements this morning. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one into ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
Friends, so often in life we wonder, well, can I make a difference? Well, the good news is, is that yes, yes, you can make a difference. The good news also is that we are indeed a people who have been blessed. We are blessed, many of us, by having good health, loved ones that are around us, that as this is a holiday weekend where we celebrate independence, we are probably going to be surrounded by loved ones, friends, and family. We are indeed a people that are blessed. And those blessings and those gifts, well, they come from God. And it's only right as a people who are blessed that we are a people who give back. So we invite you to be able to give back if you are able. Because when you give back here at St. Andrews, we are able to be able to utilize that to be able to help bless others who may find themselves in situations, well, that may not be in the same situation as you. And so we invite you to be able to do that in a number of ways. Uh, the first way is you can uh, drop your uh, gift off at the church. You can also go to our website at www.saumcnj.org uh, or and right there you can find uh, our electronic uh, giving or you can uh, mail in your gift if you would like uh, to our church and we would be uh, very grateful uh, for you to be able to help uh, the ministry of this church and also the ministry that we do to be able to help other people in any way uh, possible and so friends I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me as I take a moment and just bless the gifts that we will receive this weekend. God, you are indeed a good and gracious God, and we thank you for the many gifts and blessings that we indeed received first, and that because we have received first, we then also are individuals who give back to you. We pray for the gifts that are given and also for the givers. We pray that these gifts will be used to be able to help those who need help and that we can be a beacon of light and love, your light and love, into this community here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, before our service ends this morning, I just have a couple of announcements. The first is, is that next week, the church wanted to make sure that I communicated. If you weren't able to be here this weekend because it is the holiday weekend and so many of us are getting together to celebrate the birth of our nation because it is uh, July 4th weekend. Uh, next weekend, the church will be having a reception to welcome uh, Beth, uh, Raylan, Jackson, and I uh, to the St. Andrews family as the new pastoral family. And so that'll take place right after the church uh, in the narthex. And so uh, we invite you to join us for that where we'll have the opportunity to be able to meet you. So we hope that you'll consider joining us for that if you live here in the Cherry Hill area. And the second announcement is uh, I want to give a thank you to you as a church. I want to thank uh, Karen and Barbara and the entire transition team in SPRC for the wonderful and generous uh, welcome that we've received, whether it's been making sure that the parsonage is ready or uh, things here at the church or uh, there was uh, food and meals, uh, and Carol and uh, Marilyn were a part of that, uh, that were uh, prepared for us, or whether it was even way back in February, you as a church welcomed us uh, with uh, very open arms with many, many, many uh, messages. And so we have already felt extremely welcomed here uh, and a part of this uh, church family. And so we are very thankful for that. And so I just wanna take a minute to say thank you for that. We are excited to be in this journey with you and to write this chapter, as I talked about earlier, uh, together. And if, uh, like I said, we keep our focus with God, I trust that this will be a good chapter together. So thank you again. Uh, to everyone for all that you have done to welcome us already.
Well, friends, as we prepare to go this week, may we be a people that remember. Remember what took place at the communion table. Remember what Jesus did with his disciples that night. It was about pouring into others, not just that night, but that Jesus had done that over and over and over again with his disciples. It was about taking time. It was about sacrifice. It was about listening. It was about, well, loving on them. And Jesus did all of these things, and well, the Mandalorian did the same thing with the child. When those things happen, goodbyes can be hard. But that shows that good relationships are forming, good relationships are building. Friends, we live in a world that desperately needs good relationships. May we be a people that can carry the grace that we experienced at that table, the reminder that we are not alone. May we be a people that can carry that grace. And may we carry that grace and pour into others, just as others and God have poured into us. May we go this week remembering just that. Amen.